<laughs> Hi there, it's Joseph here at Edge Dynamics uh, making a video on edge restoration so I can have a shave. I'm dying for a shave and I always like a new razor to shave with and I've got this one and I'll give you a brief history on it. Uh, the maker is, or well, the maker's mark is Unwin and Albert, 17 Region Street. And these guys, are, I think they were hairdressers. And, uh, what I did with this razor, I can't remember if it had scales, but um, I've cleaned it up and just like a cosmetic regrind. There's pitting up here. Um, it's a nice, it's a nice little wedge. I don't know how well that's focusing. It's a nice wedge, and I did it some months ago. And then when I'd finished, when I'd completed the, the razor, I realized it's quite small. So I just put it to the side. It's been on the side for a few months actually. Um, but I've just, uh, just measured it, it's 21 millimeters. I think that makes it a six eighths. And I think it was 21, let me check. No, it wasn't 21. was well I thought I was getting okay because I mentioned it I put some tape on it earlier I was what happened was I was gonna hone it and then I thought no let's start again and let's film it so that's where we're at with this video so it was 19 with the tape on but we're now coming in at 18 so it's um, just below six eighths I think I have to check on it. Um, but nevertheless, it's nice razor. But I, what I didn't want to do with something this small was go to the trouble of making scales because it's a lot of effort. Um, and plus, there's pitting uh, remains there, so I, you know I can't go too flashy on it. So what I did, I went through old scales that I've got. Now I've made these scales some years ago. And they've been waiting for a razor, um, and they're quite short, so nothing's really going to fit into this these scales, apart from this. So I'll give you a length on it, just to show you. It's quite a, it's quite small, and we've got so we've got we got a uh, fourteen centimeters and the blade is well to the back of the heel it's three inches up there so but it f fits perfectly in these scales and I would have thought the scales are maybe a little bit too good for the razor because they're oxhorn it's white I'm not sure how that shows on the film but these are white and white is really rare and it's got steel lined wedge and nickel silver pins um, and what I've done is I, I it was buffed and polished I sanded it with thousand grit and oiled it but I can still see polished there I think what I'll do is I'll just I'm just going to repolish them on the buffer to bring them up shiny but it all works well it's like these two belong together and you can see it's just got the slightest curve to it which is something I really appreciate and it just works really well so um, hopefully we've got a nice bevel to come and that's what this video is um, I've got a few other things to show you but I don't want to uh, take away from the video which is um, edge restoration I'll show you a couple of other th things actually what I've got on the go 
I've got this razor and I don't know either how that's showing but this one is on the site and it had uh, wooden scales lignum vitae and the, the shape of the scales is pretty awful really I did it like a long long time ago so this has been on the workbench for like many months and during that time even though it was oiled you've got a speck and a speck kind of like where it is pitting there's no really getting getting rid of those and um, it's a 7 8 it's a urn uh, Solingen it says 1920 it's actually it does have mustard oil on it which is really thick stuff just remove some of that so with this as well um, I didn't want to make new scales for it I didn't want to go to all the effort because the razor's not in that good a condition there was pitting up here which I've removed um, but I say it's not in that good a condition because of how I restored this razor so this I must have done this like six years ago something like that and it looks to me that what I've done is I've hit it with greaseless because I can see all the scratch marks and then I've polished it which I wouldn't do that today um, but having said that I've got a shave video with this razor and it shaves amazingly it really is something special um, it's bellied and not all Solingen or certainly not all the large Solingens shave well I've got one in particular that doesn't shave well but this really really does shave well so it was worth the effort um, so I found these scales and these were off a for barber's use because it's a this is a this is quite a big one this is coming in it's, oh, it's just below 16 centimeters and we've got three and a quarter inches on the blade so it's, it is large um yeah the scales so finding scales for this was near impossible but I had these and they were quite fat so I had to basically I had to reshape these scales which is you might notice the pin um, and the wedge end is a little bit high and and the pivot end is a little bit low but just fractionally um, so I reshaped them which is not an easy thing to do um, they're quite thin and these I would have done these by hand this is how old these are but it's, this is um, if I didn't say this one is ox this is buffalo translucent buffalo horn um, so I made this wedge for them and it's really nice and it's squared off which you know, suits the razor and the uh, tip comes so close to the wedge it's scary honestly it really is close to it but um, this urn and it says there C. Federico urn walled Solingen they've drilled the, the pivot hole it's quite small and it's like perfect it's not wonky or anything so the blade won't move so I don't have to ever don't have to worry about it ever touching the wedge um, I'm not sure how, if you can see how translucent it is it does look like the heel comes too close to the edge but it doesn't you stick your finger in there and you're not catching the heel so this is one I've got home and uh, take photos and then on top of all that one thing I wanted to show quickly as well was I made a case for my Joseph Elliott the one that I did it's lined with uh, sterling silver and sterling silver pins so I made this leather case which um, I really really like it uh, and I made this without a stencil or any real thought going into it just kind of happened this way and there's the razor in there that's got to be honed as well but it's a lovely case as edge dynamics 
and uh, yeah, I just wanted to show you that. Let's get on with this hiding this. So first and foremost, we're going to need some tape. So what I'll do is to try to protect from from the tape leaving a mark. Add some more oil. It was oiled already, but and this could be a long video. I may have to split it into two, but we'll see how it goes. And I'll try and do this. I normally do this on my knee, which is a lot easier. But I'll try and do it. Right, I'm gonna have to do it on my knee. Too much oil in the tape won't even stick, so I'll give that a snip and then we're going to back that up with the uh, polyamide tape or Captain. It's not working too well, right? All right, let's go again. Snip that off. Go for a new piece. You sort of got to work each side. Make sure there's no wrinkles. And that'll do. Right, so that's ready to go. Something I always um, pay attention to as well when I'm in this position is the shoulder and the heel but they're quite set back I don't have to worry about these banging into the stone because last thing I want to do is polish up a razor and then bang that on the stone or something and that's not what I want to do right so that's that's good and what I've got here is the Kramer it's the 400 and we'll start off with this but it doesn't cut as well as the 1k obviously because the grit particles are quite thick so it can't get a good grip on the steel but it does actually remove just create a slurry there see what happens. Got a cup of coffee here, I have to move out the way as well. And considering there's no bevel, that's feeling really good from the off. Normally it feels really bad because there's no bevel but it's really good. And I'm not using pressure don't don't like to use pressure because I've created so many problems using pressure going back years that I basically learned to not use pressure and 
this could be quite boring for you guys, but I'm just gonna work it and see what I can create, what happens. It's alright, this the home feels pretty good because I created it slowly on this stone and I was ready to go. That's when I decided to start again and film it. So the stone has been a little wet which is always a good idea as well. Take the 1K, which is up next. And just introduce a little water to it. Just makes a bit of a softer feel. And all I'm doing now is I'm just concentrating on the heel really. got a slight smile to it but that's in line with the spine and now I'm just working the toe and then I'm working the whole thing I've got to be really careful of catching something I tend to do and if I just go straight up and down I mean I don't know if it was originally that flat, well that's something to do with me, but I like it. And then I'll just give everything a wipe down. And have a look at the bevel, what's going on. And just reflecting it in the light. Uh, yeah, I can see that it's starting to form a little bit thinner on the heel than it is there on the rest. Uh, a little bit fatter in the middle there and thinner here. So it's got to work the heel a bit. Um, anything wrong with the grind, with the bevel shape is down to me because I had it on the. Um, on the grinder it's a bevel that I've made and so I'm just holding my fingers on the heel plus I know it's a bit of light reflecting off there so again I'm not pushing down on it I'm just uh, just the weight of my fingers and I don't think I've done too much damage. I'm going to swap over this. Stick this one down here. Get out of the way. I'll come in with the 1K. And this is the 325 DMT. I recommend everyone has one of these. I think they last forever. And uh, the more they wear, they wear, the more useful they are. You can feel that straight away digging into the steel. Concentrate on the heel. And I can't help but do some kind of rolling X, which I might not need to do, but. Working the tight the toe end as well. And when I drag the edge, I do that 
I did that there primarily just to feel if there's any chips. And that would have let me know, but there's nothing going on. Right, and let's check this out. Still got some water there. That's looking good. Probably need to bring the toe in a little bit. And this side, same thing. Just need to work the toe a little bit. So I have got the microscope set up as well. And when I think the bevel's set, that's when I'll just have a quick look under the scope. So now I, I'm just, I am putting a tad of pressure on the toe as I do this. And the purpose of that was just to um, join the apex. So there aren't any chips forming. I think this is going to be good. So, could possibly be not enough work, but um, I'm basically just trying to be negative, you know, so that's the way to go. Instead of thinking, oh yeah, that's amazing, and you know, you learn more and you get further if you're a bit harder on yourself and aware of uh, what can go wrong. So now we just go with water. And we'll see how it looks in the light. Just sort of the uniform, not the um, shape of the bevel, but the like the striations, how they reflect. Are they, do they all reflect the same or, or not? I know what I'm looking for, but I might not be able to explain it that well. Yeah, Dan, this back half, yeah, it's not, it's not in line with this, this half here. It's looking a bit, um, it's looking like a bit of a mess actually to me, and here as well. So what we do, I think it definitely needs a bit more work, so we get a bit of a slurry. This type of video can actually be boring. I do you get that? Uh, we've gone through the uh, captain tape and it's coming off a bit. So get rid of that. And I'll retape it as quick as I can. Hopefully I get a nice shave off of this. I was thinking tomorrow as well. I'm supposed to be in the workshop doing razors, but I may well just give the day to taking photos. Because there's a lot involved. I've got a load of razors for the website. I've got to take the photos. Then I've got to Photoshop them. Um, make them look, you know, crop them. Um, if I, use, I, buy, I like to use the black background, and that shows up all dust particles. I have to remove all the dust, and I have to have a good shot. I can't have it showing the razor worse than it is, and I 
don't want it look at making the razor look better than it is either but it's more important not to have the photos look worse than the razor actually is uh, and it's a little bit difficult because obviously they're high definition they've got studio lighting and so and I've got to have you know certain photos I've got to have a, a number of photos of each side and the tang and so it might take more than one session but once I've got the photos and then the photos have been photoshopped and they're ready to go on the site then each razor needs measuring, weighing then comes the task of getting them on the site you know and that's arduous I think is the word it takes a bit of time per razor to get all the photos, all the writing and, uh, but if I start the process then I've started it so there's no turning back and I'll see it through and if you look at my site now I'm, I did manage to get the Salm Rock on there um, just I put it in place of the Shobodani so so I've reached half an hour and the video cut out and I'm not sure what we've missed so I'll just quickly recap um, it's popping hair like it's fully honed but it's only off of 1k really nicely and um, it looks really good under the scope as well um, there's no distractions go right off the edge and um, it's like really smooth you know there's there's no chips or jagged bits it looks really really good so it could be an amazing shave hopefully um, so I have to have a look on editing see what how far I actually got because I'm not sure but um, I'm going to give it a full progression on the Nakayama the Maruka and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wet a few Nagoras well just this Majiro because it's really hard and I'll start with this Botan it's not a Sano and it's the ugliest stone I think I've ever seen let's just try and get a slurry it's not really soft either but I wouldn't call it super hard Just trying to create slurry anywhere other than other than in the centre where it's going to dish anyway. And I do get a uh, like a dark slurry there and a white slurry. From the rest of the stone but this has been performing really well so. and a lot of the slurries I make it down to how much I can be bothered to do this for to tell you the truth we're generating now I think once you've got slurry the slurry then helps make more slurry because it's sort of cutting on itself Just cutting the stone below right I think that'll do because I'm not making too much progress right that'll do and then give it some more water and we'll see it's a little bit thick 
That's fine. It is what it is. And I'll just work this. Um, considering sort of how fast the bevel was set to pop in arm hair from when I dragged it on the edge will give me an indication of how much work I need to do with the slurries but in turn that drag on the edge you know it's not that reliable because a tad bit more pressure and it might have took a lot more to set the bevel but that's why I use just the weight of the razor or tell myself that's what I do oops just whacked the shoulder again that's why I do actually I always put a bit of tape there but today I didn't because I always make sure I'm working the heel right to the edge and uh, that's why that happens to me now what I can do as well at this point is look under the scope and see how much of a kasumi I've got which can also help me see or help me decide um, how strong the steel is but problems with that is I'm just going up and down so the Kasumi is right near bevel um, it's turned a little bit darker and I've done quite a bit of work here so we'll have a little look and the stone is fast or aggressive so Just in the light there, I just saw you could see it's gone a bit less shiny and a bit more satin. So I'll just look under the scope. <laughs> that is uh, that's pretty nice. It's got striations like 90% of the way of the bevel, and those the last 10% by the apex is a uh, Kasumi. So you could look at that and say it's not doing anything or you could look closer and see yep it is but the rest of the bevel I don't care about it's just say the last 10% that's fine and then we go on to the uh, Tenju super soft it's a nice stain but you know what the soft ones they're not going to last are they so I think I'd rather have the harder ones I do it's got enough water but we give it more and that again is it's a little bit thick again Um, but I don't mind because I'm going to be going thinner as we get to the end so plus if this is rounding the edge then maybe that's a good thing we'll save the real fine honing for the end I'm just concentrating on the heel And then at the end, if it's not HHT at the toe, or not at the heel, you know, you can take readings from that. Either done too much somewhere or not enough somewhere else, but it's all information. Right, that looks like it's, uh, it's darkened. And I don't want to spend too much time on that. Then we 
go to uh, this nightmare of a stone. It's really hard. It's the Majuro. I'm sure when I've long after I've got this, Nagora will still be floating around somewhere. <coughs> I'll probably be in the coffin with me, according to me. I'm taking all my stones with me. You can have the razors, but not the stones. No. I could probably fit some razors in the coffin as well, actually. You ain't getting anything, are you? Right. See, because I did soak it, well, I did make it wet. It is working. That's a bit better. It's a bit thinner. Uh, it does look a bit pink to me, but that could be the lighting. But I'm doing this quicker than normal, just because it's a video. Working the tire a bit. Uh, I think it's darkened a little bit. I don't really, not really bothered. Had some work. This is a really nice one. I've got a safe at arm. <coughs> That's the honing arm. This one, oh, I'm going to water it down. And it's not really the type of razor to go one handed. Behind this, I'm going to do the uh, Solingen. I've got about four or five to do, but I can't really do them all. It's been quite an effort filming this and doing this, so I'll get back on the stones tonight. And there's not a camera in my way. for that. 
so the only issue that I could have really now with this edge is that I've overhoned it and I won't know that until I do the HHT Hopefully I can get a shave with it. I need a shave today or tomorrow. And this is a really hard time, I this is. Just don't want to scratch my stone. Whether the scratches will have an effect, I do not know, but I'd just rather not. Yeah, it's working. Oh, this is real, real hard work. I think that's about it really. So what I'll do is I'll pause this video, go and get some hairs, see if see if it um oh that means I've got to strop it actually okay all right I'm gonna go and strop it and I like that bevel now I can see that bevel is nice and uniform. Just being a bit, um, yeah, the bevel's fine, yeah, that's excellent. I think I was just being a bit dramatic, but yeah, so I'll, um, I'll go and strop it, I'll give it 50 and 50, uh, linen and cordovan, and then I'll come back here and we'll see if it um, pops hair. So I've either completely overhanged it or that's the wrong way around. So I'll try this end. Seems good. Obviously the closer I get into it the easier it pops. But to me we got a winner. And uh, also as well I should point out about this razor. You can probably see the tang, the underside, the way it angles off to the side. Because it's really bent tang 
yet the pins it's pinned in line so it's going to give a nice tightness and when you close it it's bang on in the middle so I just thought I'd show off a little bit there but there you go that's it so that's a really nice razor and I'm looking forward to shaving with it and uh, yeah thanks <laughs>